the crucifixion of Jesus. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. which were handed railed on him saying If thou be the Christ save thyself and us But the other answering rebuked him saying Does not in the same condemnation and we indeed justly for we received as your reward deeds but this man hath done nothing amiss and he said unto Jesus said unto him, Remember me, he cried, when you come into your kingdom, remember the poor wretch who suffered and died beside you? What made him ask it? I really don't know. But there was something about that man Jesus which clearly touched him, enough apparently, despite the agony he endured, to inspire that last desperate plea. It came as a complete surprise, that's for sure, for he wasn't a religious man. His faith, not just in God, but in everything, long broken by then. You see, he knew he'd done wrong, and he wanted to change, to put the past behind him and start again. But what hope did he have? For how many were there ready to give him a second chance, willing to believe he could mend his ways? None. One mistake, one moment's madness, and he was an outcast. A reject, condemned to spend the rest of his life in the gutter, devoid of hope, devoid of meaning. No wonder he couldn't take it. Eventually, he just snapped, throwing not just scruples but caution to the wind, and after that there could only be one result. It broke my heart when they caught him, for he was still my son, whatever he'd done. Yet he seemed resigned by then, as if he accepted he deserved punishment for his crimes. But, as they lifted up his cross, he caught sight of Jesus nailed there beside him, and his expression changed in a moment. From dull despair to anger, disbelief, dismay. I knew what he was thinking, for I felt it too. Why this man, a man who was so clearly innocent, not an ounce of evil in him, not even the faintest suggestion of hatred or malice. He took everything the crowds threw at him, the insults, the ridicule, the rejection, and even when the other fellow hanging there beside him joined in the abuse, hurling down curses, 
His reaction never changed. No anger, no resentment, no curses in return. It was the first time I'd seen anything like it. The only time. And clearly it touched my son as much as it touched me. The next thing I knew, I heard his voice, calling out, loud and clear, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I caught my breath then, afraid what might happen next. But why should Jesus listen? There, of all places, no one else ever did. What reason to think he'd have time for anything but his own agony? Yet he turned with a look I shall never forget. Such love, such joy, such acceptance in his face, and he spoke those wonderful words. Today you will be with me in paradise. Was it true? Well, I can't tell you, can I? Not in this life anyway. If you want proof, you must wait and see. But I can tell you this. When they cut my boy down, I held him in my arms and you should have seen the smile on his face. The peace and joy which radiated from him. Happiness which I'd given up hoping ever to see again. It was enough for me. I knew then, beyond doubt, beyond question, that Jesus had heard his prayer and answered him. Lord Jesus Christ, whoever we are, whatever we have done, it is never too late to respond to your love. You are always ready to forgive and forget, always waiting to pick up the pieces of our lives and help us start again. That is why you came, to offer a clean break to everyone who recognises their need a new beginning in this life and the life to come. And that is why we come to you now, seeking your help and mercy. For we know our weaknesses and our sin is ever before us. Lord Jesus Christ, we join in the words of that simple and unforgettable prayer. When you come into your kingdom, remember me. Amen. What was that Simeon said? A sword will pierce your soul. I spent so long wondering what that meant, tossing and turning on my bed, brooding and fretting when I'd had a moment to myself. It seemed such a strange thing to say, especially at what was meant to be a time of joy. We'd only had Jesus a few days, and my heart was still bursting with happiness as we were both over the moon. Simeon too, that's the odd thing. He was almost dancing with delight, but then his expression clouded and he gave that awful warning, which has haunted me ever since. I just haven't been able to forget it, try as I might. Always the question has been there, nagging away in the back of my mind, even in the brightest moments. What did he mean? And if you'd asked me as little as a week ago, I still wouldn't have been sure. Oh, I'd a fair idea by then, of course. The fears were mounting up, but I'd still kept on hoping, praying that I might be wrong. Now I know though, all too well. My heart is not just pierced, it's broken. For I've just stood here today and seen my son die. I watched him cursed and ridiculed, scorched and beaten. I watched as they hammered nails through his hands and lifted him onto a cross. I watched as he twisted in agony and cried out in despair. And a moment ago, I watched as they plunged a spear into his side. At least he didn't feel that. Thank God he was dead by then. But I did. It thrust deep inside, running me through without mercy. I'd never known such pain, such agony, such horror. And now life has gone for me too. I feel it has nothing left to offer. Yet it has given me joy. No one can take that away. 
he was with me for 30 wonderful years. Everything a son could be. Not many mothers can say that. I've had joy and now I have pain. Maybe that's the way it had to be. The way it has to be, if there's to be any joy at all. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 